Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to take a look at a blind SSRF and how to exploit it and we are going to be using a port swigger lab for that. So let's jump straight into it. And this lab is as always a web shop and on this web shop we can do things, we can review products and all that good stuff. Now we are looking for an SSRF. So let's get a request into Burp and see what that looks like. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to check in Burp that my um, my proxy is on, and then in my browser I'm going to set my Foxy proxy to uh, send requests to Burp, and then on the web page I will click on a, a an item that I want to buy, and then we will see that my proxy pops up, and yes, we have intercepted that request. I can now send it to the repeater, and now we can go and look at this request, what is it, how does it look, and where could we actually get an SSRF in this. So, looking closer at this request, uh, we see that there's not much going on. However, we have this refer header. And this refer header is a header that's very commonplace, and it pretty much defines where the user has come from before sending this request. Uh, and this is obviously very useful um, for, for example, tools that will try to track you through the internet or, or tools that will give analytics on a website and I can show the admins, oh yeah, users visit this page from there and from there. And it might actually be that these analytics tools are visiting the referrer website just to see what it's like and to get more insights into it. And that is something that we could potentially exploit because what if we set our own URL in that refer header, will this analytics tool visit that URL? And if so, will we be able to exploit it in some way? And that's exactly what we are gonna be trying out. And for that, I'm gonna be using Burp Collaborator. Now there are other tools that you can use. You can also have your own website up to uh, get these out of band requests. However, we are gonna use Burp Collaborator here. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to the Burp Collaborator window, window and copy my uh, subdomain here. Now, what does this mean? If this domain gets a request, it will forward it back to my burp and then I can view that. All right, let's see if we can exploit a blind SSRF here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in my burp collaborator URL into the refer header and I'm going to send this request. And when we send this request, we go back to our burp collaborator and there we see that, yeah, we get two DNS queries and an HTTP request to our, our subdomain here, to our collaborator URL, which is amazing. So we have a blind SSRF and that's really cool. However, how do you exploit something like this? We only get a request back. We don't get any information back. Uh, for usual, usual SSRFs, you would be able to um, point them towards a local host domain or a, an IP address within their network and try to exfiltrate data that way. However, we cannot exfiltrate any data in this case. And that's an issue for exploitation, obviously. However, we can send forge requests to go anywhere. And that's really cool. How could we exploit this? Well, we could scan for common exploits, like very popular exploits on the uh, local domain and then if we forge those exploits correctly to have a, a ping back to us to also work out of bands Then that could work I guess and that is what we're going to be trying here and uh, the exploit we're going to be trying to exploit is Shell shock uh, this is a uh, was very common a bash issue that existed for a long time uh, If you want to read more about this specific exploit then then go and do that However, in this case, we are just going to be trying to see if any host in the internal network is vulnerable to Shellshock. And I'm going to just pick a payload here from this uh, GitHub, uh, payload all the things, has this payload here. And we can see that it sets the user header to a specific string that's going to exploit something in Bash in certain versions of Apache. And then we have our payload. Okay, let's try that out. So I'm going to set my own user header to this specific um, payload, um, but now we need some actual something that's going to be executed here. Uh, and what we execute, it has to be out of bands. If we just execute a who am I here, we're never going to see the result of that. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be using a user slash bin slash ns lookup, and I'm going to follow that by my own burp collaborator URL. 
So if this executes on a host within the network, then uh, we will get a ping back through this NS lookup on our collaborator. And that's exactly what we want. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to scan the internal network. And for this, we're gonna set our refer header to a specific IP address and port within the network. And for example, an internal network range is 192.168.0. Something. Uh, for example, we have extracted that information some way. Um, then we can start scanning that. And then we can also scan the ports and all of that. But for that, we need to go into the intruder. So I'm gonna do that, send this to intruder. And in intruder, we're gonna uh, have select this last piece of the IP address as the payload. And then, um, or as the target, and then as the payload, what are we gonna fill in there? We're gonna make a list of numbers from one to two, five, six. And okay, now you could also add another, um, another uh, brute force here on the port and, and do that. However, just to make it a bit quicker for the, vid for the video, we're just gonna take port 8080, which is a very popular port as well, um, that you would obviously scan yourself as well. So, okay. What can we do now? Now we can start this attack. And if we start this attack, we can see that every request returns the same length back. And that's normal. Why? Well, this is out of bounds. We don't get any visual representation what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and that's, of course, a bummer because you would like to see all of that come back. But hopefully after this attack finishes, we will see in our burp collaborator that one of these hosts on this port actually returned something to us. We won't know which host, we will just know that something here worked if it happens. And if we look at our burp collaborator and we see that, yes, we get something back. And that's amazing. So one of these uh, systems here on this internal network on port 8080 has something vulnerable to Shellshock running uh, because, well, we got this request back. Now, now that we have that whole chain together where we send a request, the server makes an internal request, and that internal request is then made again to our system. Now that we that, have that whole chain together, let's see how we can exfiltrate some data from here. And well, we already have RCE, so it's not hard at all. Um, for example, what we can do is we can use um, in our payload, changes to a dollar sign, and then opening curly brace and then closing curly bra brace, and put that in front of our subdomain. So this is another, uh, sub-level on our domain um, and this is going to run a command and then put that output as a string there in our domain. So what I can put in there is for, for example who am I and now what bash is going to do it's going to run who am I and then the output of that it's going to prepend that to my um, to my subdomain here and then going to make the ns lookup request and then we should see um, a request coming back and if we execute that and we obviously have to go through all of these IPs again, brute force them. But if we then go look at our burp collaborator, we see a new request pop up. And here we see that, yes, that works. And we were able to run the who am I command and see the username of who is running on that host. And now we obviously have RCE. And now you should be able to, be, uh, to exploit this yourself and go and exfiltrate more data from this system. And that is how a blind SSRF can lead to exploitation and RCE. Now blind SSRFs are very difficult to exploit. There are a lot of guessing um, and yeah it, it, it's really a black box that you're working in. However when you find a blind SSRF try to make sure that you have a lot of information about the network. Try to have already found as much information as possible about what is running on the inside so that you don't have to go in fully blind. There's going to be a lot of guesswork but you could get an RCE out of it and wouldn't that be worth it all. Now, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. I hope you saw something that you had never seen before and I hope you can integrate it in your workflow in Bug Bounty. That's it for me today. I hope to see you back next week for another video. So take care, guys. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe. See ya.